Uh, my name's uh, David Curtis. I am a uh, hepatic pancreatic biliary surgeon at Hartford Hospital. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit from a surgical perspective, and I will skip through some slides that have been covered. So we've talked about uh, new cases um, whenever it's close, whenever a cancer, uh, the number of new cases per year is similar to the number of deaths per year. It's, it's not a good situation. The location is important um, from a surgical perspective. It's about 75% of the cancers that we find are in the head or, or uh, uncinate portion of the pancreas, and we'll show some anatomy here in just a second. In talking about symptoms, um, knowing that pancreatic cancer has been present for a number of years, by the time someone has weight loss or, or turns yellow with jaundice from blockage of the bile duct, um, it's oftentimes uh, quite late. The body and tail lesions often present uh, even later on in the process and have often spread at that point. We get our best results, obviously, as uh, Michael has discussed, with cancers that are confined to the pancreas. Um, unfortunately, most cancers have spread uh, to lymph nodes in the region already and many have spread uh, to uh, other organs or blood vessels in the area due to the anatomy. The location presents a unique challenge uh, because while the pancreas is a long thin gland that lays across uh, the retroperitoneum of the abdomen, it's also adjacent to important blood vessels uh, to the bowel, uh, to the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum and um, is right below where the liver sits and the bile duct passes through part of the pancreas to empty bile into the intestine. <clears throat> this shows you some of that ductal anatomy. We've been talking about some of these uh, cystic, uh, precancerous cystic lesions of the pancreas and some of those uh, typically involve from this main pancreatic duct or the branches and as you you probably remember the pancreas is important for both making insulin to control glucose levels as well as uh, making enzymes to help uh, digest uh, protein and fat. Uh, we've talked about some of the blood vessels, uh, some of the venous drainage, one of the first spots that we're looking at when uh, we find someone who has jaundice and has a cancer. One of the first things we look at is is it attached or growing into this vein? Uh, or this artery here because the blood supply to and from the intestine is very important and while we can chip away at uh, the vein at times these are structures that really often cannot be removed. So when we find someone with cancer we're looking at what stage they're at and is the tumor can it be removed and this is important as far as stage as well as location um, the patient's you know, personal choices, as Dr. Karasik pointed out, some patients chose not to have surgery even with precancerous lesions that should be removed. An individual's health is very important. You know, how is their cardiac status? Um, how healthy are they? How much exercise do they get? Can they tolerate a major operation? Uh, pancreatic surgery is always a big deal. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And we're looking at uh, sur surgery for those tumors that are confined to the pancreas. At times, we can't cure and we have to palliate or make life better with an operation, which you can look at me funny if we're trying to make life better with surgery, although we're not curing it. But people with obstruction of the bowel or of the bile duct can sometimes need an operation, even if that surgery won't cure them. Other treatments that are often required are radiation, chemotherapy, and then there are certainly some trials that, were, that are being researched and looking into this, into ways to better treat them. We are seeing some better results with, with some more aggressive chemotherapy, uh, but this more aggressive chemotherapy called Fulfurinox, it's a little more toxic and it's not well tolerated by people in poor health or, or elderly, but we are seeing some results with that and that is something that is going to be hot off the press in the very near future. 
Here is a gentleman who I saw in my office uh, actually on Friday. And he's two and a half years out from his operation. He has what we call a classic double duct sign. His bile duct is enlarged and his pancreatic duct is enlarged because he has a small tumor right here. Uh, he underwent what we call the Whipple operation and he is currently disease free two and a half years out from his, from his surgery. He also required uh, chemotherapy, uh, but we always fear that cancer is going to come back because of the aggressive nature of pancreatic cancer. The Whipple procedure, and again, remember, in this head of the pancreas is where we have about 75% of the tumors develop. This Whipple operation is a really big deal. It involves removing that head of the gland, the intestine right there, the end of the bile duct, because all these structures have the same blood supply. They have the same lymph node drainage as well, and so to remove those with clear margins and make the best effort to cure a cancer involves removing that area and then sewing things back together. With the, uh, the body and tail of the pancreas, when we have cancers in that location, we don't have to put as much back together. Um, these operations can often, and most of them are done laparoscopically in which that portion involved of the pancreas is removed as well as the lymph nodes in the area and typically the spleen as well due to the blood supply and lymph nodes. And while certainly we're not putting a bunch of things back together, these are still major operations. This is major surgery. For those who are queasy, you can pause for a second. This is what the normal pancreas looks like and someone having a pancreas operation for the tumor right here. The, again, the best results that we have with surgery, and unfortunately many patients have their tumors found late in the process, the best results are when it's localized. When it's spread, the survival rate at five years drops significantly, and this is from the National SEER database. Uh, we have some studies here uh, with the probability of survival. Some of the best results that we can get with five-year survival are on the, on the, uh, uh, in the order of 20 to 25 percent. And that's even with excellent superb care, surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. So really the emphasis that, we're, that we have here is can we keep people that would potentially develop cancer from getting it and thus have much better survival rates? We'll skip through this. So these cystic neoplasms, as have, have been discussed, uh, come in several categories. We worry about the main duct ones as well as the side branch ones. But if you have the main pancreatic duct involved with one of these cystic neoplasms, those are recommended that someone have surgery. The concern as well is that this is a field defect in the pancreas, so if you have surgery and have part of your pancreas taken out, we need to continue surveillance with the endoscopic ultrasound studies uh, because 8 to 10 percent of those people can develop another cystic neoplasm down the road later on in life. The big thing with these cystic neoplasms is that surgical removal of someone who needs to have surgery and should have it that that surgery can prevent the development of cancer and thus the survival is almost 100% in those people versus in the best case scenario about 20%. These are uh, some pictures of how the cells change in that duct. You see, you've seen some of those on Dr. Karasik's uh, slides and these do change over time. <coughs> Here is a woman uh, who had a very large uh, mucinous cyst adenoma, so a cystic neoplasm not connected to the pancreatic duct. Here you can see the head of the pancreas, the portal vein that we've pointed out already, and then this here is a large cystic neoplasm with a lot of solid components that clearly needed to come out. This is it where it has been removed, and you can see these solid components. Fortunately, she only had some carcinoma in situ in the wall. None of it was invasive, and so she was cured with her operation. She has no diabetes. She has no enzyme issues with only a small portion of her pancreas remaining. Here's another one. This is a main duct IPMN cystic uh, neoplasm, and you can see kind of this lumpy pancreas. 
This involved the entire pancreas and the entire thing had to be removed. And so there are times where surgery is necessary. Uh, we hope that you know, no one really wants to have to meet a surgeon, uh, particularly for the pancreas, but there are times where we can actually make a difference and in, in prevent the development of invasive cancer, and that's where as a surgeon I can make the biggest difference. Um, and so a lot of this is, is education in screening with the endoscopic ultrasound, um, in identifying those patients who are at a higher family risk um, so that we can intervene before cancer develops because it's still tough to cure pancreatic cancer once it's there.